we call it to order? Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, okay, so the first thing are reviewing the minutes. Um, Liza sent out, we've got um, August, September, October. Um, should we start with October because we'd remember it better? I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's start with October. Um, does anyone, do people want a minute to take a look? Who is there? Steve, you were here. Joe was here. Grace was here. Ryan was here. And, and Liza came afterwards. She came yes. right as it was closing. Yes, I, I just, um, I filled her in. Okay. Hi, Dan. Um, hey. Oh, hi, Dan. Hey. You haven't missed anything. We were just looking at the October minutes. Oh, I was looking at them. They're very nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> Joe's a pro. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lisa's here too. Nice. Hello. Um, good. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Hey, Grace. Uh -huh. Hi. Okay. And Roseanne. And Roseanne. Nice. Yeah. So, does anyone have any comments on the October minute? All right, should I move to approve? Second. Great. Okay, October done. What about September? Um, this was our post ag day wrap up. Um, All right, any edits on that? Yeah. Hi, Happy, are you there? I'm here. Oh, great. We can't Somewhere. see you, but we can hear you. <laughs> All right. Does someone else want to move to approve these ones? I'll move to approve. <laughs> I don't think I can. No, just Steve or Joe uh, or Grace. Uh, oh, I can. Oh, I'll move them then. Okay, great. Keep it moving. Grace moved it. Okay. Second. Perfect. We've got August minutes here. Um, Fairly sparse, but that's okay. We're busy in August. We are doing Ag Day stuff. There was no video. So. <laughs> oh, yes. Right. That's OK. It makes it very accurate. See, that's that's yeah. what, Joe, if you just that's the minimum or not the minimum, but that's adequate. So if it works out. <laughs> very good. I'm just. I've just pushed a wrong button on Zoom. I don't know what. Oh, huh. you still, uh, we still see you. Oh, okay. I, I can only see one person yeah. at a time now. Let's see. Hi, Lise. Long oh, time no okay. see. <laughs> I, finished, I finished my ice cream so I could turn the camera on. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, I move to approve. I'll have a little bit minutes. right here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second it. Great. Okay, so we got our minutes out of the way. News about Concord Farms and Farmers. Anybody have any news? Everyone wrapping up or? Did people get their garlic in yet? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah we did. <clears throat> I was worried about it sprouting, but it isn't too bad yet. Oh. <clears throat> does anybody plant their garlic in plastic or does everybody do it in bare soil? We do it in plastic. Yeah, we started last year. We, we put, we don't bother often to put the drip in, but based on your mentioning how much better yours did uh, with uh, watering, we put two drip tubes in our bed, each bed. So I'm gonna do a lot of watering in the spring because our garlic was pretty minisc-teeny this. It was like miniature garlic this year. This stone. We had the best crop we ever had, but as I said before, we lost it because it cooked in the sun. Uh, it's so tragic. I know. Oh, did that happen in a greenhouse or just out in the field? Out in the field. Out in the field. Pulled? Pulled in the field? Yeah, after it was pulled. Oh. Yeah, onions came out beautiful. I never seen such nice onions. Yeah, onions were great. We try to make sure to put it like somewhere under I, I never like to leave anything in the field. Like if I'm going to harvest, if I'm going to pull it, it's got to come in. Otherwise, I'll leave it in the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, you <clears throat> spread it out on screens or something when you bring it in? What's that? Do you spread it on screens when you bring it in or how do you? Yeah, that's what I used to hang it up and, and uh, it took so much time. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. That we just started spreading it out with. Uh, on, on like a, a screen type greenhouse tabletop yeah. with mesh with the bulbs down and the greens up and not you know not multiple layers basically one layer you know maybe two layers but mm -hmm. uh, and we haven't had any trouble with it uh, but this year we we blacked out our greenhouse with silage plastic uh, normally we put like shade on there but uh, if you're going to dry flowers and stuff like that, you want complete darkness. So. I have a old fan up in the barn. We used dry and hay 50 years ago. Big guy. Five horse fan. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I intended to try to hook that up to dry things in the pallet bins. Yeah. I think it would do it all right. <clears throat> Makes That's it awful big, noise. Yeah. Hi, Chip. Hi. Uh -huh. Do you have any farm yeah. news? Uh, nope. I'm almost through um, applying antifreeze wherever it's necessary. Uh huh. <laughs> How was your tomorrow. pumpkin season? I, I don't grow many pumpkins. Oh, you but, don't? Um, no, no. Oh, okay. Hi, Liza. Hi, Liza. We're, we're still on news about Concord Farms and Farmers. Awesome. Mostly garlic. Yeah. Um, at the chair breakfast on Wednesday, when I, basically my only report about us was like that we're thinking Ag Day will be September 9th and told people to tell us if they had any conflicts. But then the chair was asked me about um, rising costs for us, like or if we're experiencing rising costs. I didn't really have an answer prepared other than yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know, I have something better I'd say if they ask me again, but it was the morning and. <laughs> <laughs> Just rising like, costs? Don't tell me about rising costs. <laughs> yeah. They were just like, oh, our farm's experiencing yes. it. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to say, really. Oh, I did. This is a, just talking about Ag Day. Uh, I did. Um, that we're on the police's calendar already for oh, nice. September 9th. We haven't gotten yeah. sign off from the town, but the police are were the only currently the only event they have in September of next year, so. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one at this meeting had any thoughts either. Oh, the other thing that came up was that the, um, the health department mentioned that they 
I guess it's new people there and they were talking about how much stuff is under their umbrella or like under their jurisdiction and she was talking about how they're in charge of weights and measures which we know but seem like no one else there knew Mm -hmm. and they were saying that they're they like contract out with the state for that and the state is now going to charge them double yeah and um Mm -hmm. I I don't know what that means I we had our bill went up this sorry our bill went up this year when he came to do it it did yeah oh it did Ours did yeah. not, but he really? yeah, yeah ours, ours was did not. Up. Ours was still twenty five. Yeah, right. but maybe it will go up. It kind of seemed like they didn't realize that much about what they were. the 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 amount she quoted was so high that our twenty five dollars would not make a dent anyway. I think it's just like part of their budget. So yeah, I don't know if it would end up affecting us, but they were just talking about it. Well, I, Paul, you guys, all, it's all Paul, right? Everybody gets the same yeah. time. Yeah. When I, I talked to Paul about it, because he mentioned that it was, that it was going to change. And he said, right now, Concord charges, like for the scales, way less than other towns, because they've basically just like subsidized it for years. And he was like, I don't know if they're really going to raise the price, because it's not going to matter that much, but just like right. heads up. Yeah. So. Well, I wonder if they will, just because they were seeming overwhelmed with everything they were in charge of and how, where some of their budgeting goes. I don't know. Um, It came up with just when she was talking about they're having trouble filling positions, Mm -hmm. um, like people to inspect septics or something like that. Who are you talking to? Do you, do you know? It, it was the, the new board of health. Is there a new board of health person it, who runs it? Or know. did I just not know her before? She's healthy. So Gabrielle is not, and was it? It know, wasn't her. her. She's still there. there. Yeah, she's still there. Gabrielle's still there. Yeah. <laughs> but this was someone else who was always at that chair. I don't know her name. Huh. No, uh, Gabby, Gabby's still there. She's still the inspector. Right. right. Yeah. Um, I'm not complaining, but we didn't see her this year. No, <laughs> no. consider yourself blessed. <laughs> She's supposed to come out two times now because we're we got bumped into some other category a couple of years ago when we made an attempt to sell meat. But so, Steve, Steve, I have a question for you on Sudbury Road. Where are you getting the power for that? Well. That's what we're trying to figure out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we've been talking to the light department for about two months, and I think oh. finally next week they're going to put a pole in. Oh. Yeah. I saw you had a new expansion tank out there the last right. few days. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we've been waiting for them to get a pole, and it seems to be a slow process. Right. <clears throat> All right. Um, should we move on to uh, the spring forum discussion, speaker ideas and logistics? Yes. Can I just ask a question? Did all the minutes yes. come through? They yeah. did. Oh. Here for them. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I saw the email from you, Liza, that gaining ground was up for talking if we did the no, the tillage topic. Yes. Um, Jennifer reached out and said, if we're, if we're going to do any topic about no till, they, they would love to send somebody, um, to be on a panel or something like that. So sounds great. Cool. I reached out as I said before to the university for, uh, suggestions for a speaker. I talked to uh, Lisa McKeague, and she had a couple people she is talking with now, but I haven't heard back. Um, I said I, I, I'd like somebody that would go into all the pros and cons of right. yeah. all the different tillage things that, that would uh, be useful to both farmers and gardeners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, one of the, one of the things that attracted the uh, it made the idea attractive to me at first was to think about like the the land that we all cultivate most much of it has been in cultivation long before uh you know pre-columbian times and they approached it completely differently 
uh, not that we need to go into that in major detail, but I mean, basically they used to girdle the trees and burn it and then plant and then move on, you know? Uh, and then, you know, when people started to own land in a more proprietary sense, mm -hmm. then they, you know, started to deplete it and plow it and so forth. Uh, but there's all these different approaches and what does it mean? What does tillage mean and what does it do for you? Uh, so, yeah, I think it shouldn't be like a booster session for no-till. Yeah, to um, me, that sounds like a great idea. Make it much more about tilling in general or not tilling or what is different the advantage? ways. Of why, why have people done this, you know, over the course of human history and how have they done it here? But, you know, it's got to be limited. And, uh, soils are quite productive, I think, compared to most any place. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of them haven't been no till for the last couple hundred years. One, one thing that is different, though, it used to be most of the small farms around had animals, and uh, part of the uh, process was supplying some manure to the soil. And uh, I used to wonder what we're going to do with all the manure from 150 cows every day. But, <laughs> now, I wish we had it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at, at the same time, there, you know, the, the commercial fertilizer was was not as readily available. Right. And they're still doing the what you described, Brian, in a lot of parts of the, the world. Uh, like yes. These, yeah. And you know, I think about, when I look at some of the trees around here, I just want to girdle them. <laughs> <laughs> and, or and you just fire. Out. Yeah, I just I burn wanna... the forest the way Henry David Thoreau burned it. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to bring a guy in there with a crane, you know, clear up the, you know, the edge of my field. <laughs> do Do we need to pay a person to be a speaker or be a moderator? I don't think so. I I think we'll come up with somebody. Okay, because I, yeah, the reason I like looked up the woman I was thinking of from American Farm and then I realized like there had been a grant for the um, meeting that they hosted that we and I had been to that made me think of it. And then I was thinking, oh, I don't know if her organization would pay her to come. And then I thought, I, I, I think she's one of the people that Lisa McKeag was uh, looking into. What? I think she's one of the people who was on Lisa McCabe's mind. Oh, okay. Melissa, I think something's covering your your microphone. Oh. Now it's better. Yeah. Okay. I right. think like covering travel expenses and stuff like that is one thing or, you know, giving some sort of little. Right. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like I just wondered, do we need like a small stipend of like you know, gas money plus like a hundred bucks. Like, is that what, I don't know what's appropriate. I just wondered, is there something we, that's like rude if we don't? Yeah, <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like new entry, um, they're a nonprofit, but like if they, like when they have farmers on panels, they give you like a hundred dollars for doing it. Um, but that would be like really not necessary for like a professor. That would seem silly. To be. I don't know what the like the usual is. I don't either. <laughs> like when Noelle came from New Entry, did we pay her? Or maybe New Entry just paid her to do it. Does anyone remember that? We had like uh anyway. I wonder if that's uh, an event we should invite neighboring uh uh egg commissions to. Oh. Yeah, that's an idea. Good idea. We had talked about um, inviting, doing more with the Carlisle group. Yeah, I don't know what the sta their status is now. Mm. Do they have, 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 have an egg commission or? I'm sorry, who? Do most towns have egg committees? I, I think Sudbury and Lincoln and Carlisle do, I think. Acton does also. I mean, I don't know if it's any good, but I mean, NOFA has, I mean, I've, uh, I haven't been for a little while, but 
the NOFA conferences have people that talk about, you know, they might be a source of some people that might be good for for um, being on a panel or running a panel. What, what, the, what time frame are we normally do this at? Like, is it March, April? Whenever? March, <laughs> April. always March, right? I mentioned probably April, but I, I was wide open. So last year we were thinking, you know, the last couple of years, it was more like our involvement and we were thinking about having things where we would be and along in the growing season, but this wouldn't really be affected by that. So I think typically we've, we've, we've thought about it as ushering in or trying to, you know, tweak people or goose people about, you know, oh, we've got plant sales, the season's coming, you know. Uh, so, you know, April is fine. I mean, March might be too early. I don't know. And then previously we've done it RV Wheeler mm -hmm. and the Conference Museum, and we've done it. We've done everyone. And at the and at a, a middle school or mm -hmm. elementary school, so like anywhere we could get a free space. Exactly. <laughs> so, what would be ideal in terms of plant sales? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like April is kind of nice. Yeah, just getting people back used to the idea of like. Hello, we're here. <laughs> We've been farming all winter. Yeah. <laughs> Actually sleeping, but. <laughs> hey, anybody? I don't know. This is a subject, I guess, but just came to mind. Is anybody here grow Brussels sprouts? We do. How do they come out? We had a good year this year. They're okay. They Ours look here. nice now, but we don't really, we're kind of close. We've got beautiful cauliflowers <laughs> and broccolis and we yeah, don't really have a source to get rid of. We had, we had all that stuff too, it's beautiful, but we stopped Brussels sprouts a few years ago because we never could get them good. They always trouble with the uh, uh, aphids, I guess, mostly on them. And Bill Kenny, his acres of beautiful looking sprouts down there until you look close and they're all specks on them and uh, he's not going to harvest them. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, really? He's not going to be able to harvest them? Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh man. Well, we, we stopped growing them because we ran in too much trouble like that with them. Yeah. I stopped growing them for like about three or four years just because I was finally we have aphids every year and we have black rot and you know various diseases uh and then this year we had club root not this year but this year that I quit growing Brussels sprouts and I was just like fuck yes <laughs> so uh we didn't grow for like three or four years and you know I didn't regret it but customers want them Mm -hmm. uh, and some years they do great and uh this year not they're not doing great but they're they're doing a, well enough that we have nice brussels sprouts they just take a long time you gotta you gotta clean them you gotta cut them and then you gotta trim them a little bit well that's yeah and if you can charge the price then uh then it's okay and it's actually right. something for our crew to do you know. getting more expensive to trim them do you yeah. sell them on the stock or no? No, I, I feel yeah. like that's like I feel like that's kind of fraudulent somehow. It's so <laughs> pathetic. I know there's a place in Cambridge called Fromagios. Yeah, and uh, I happened to go in there recently, and they had stocks, which these measly little stocks, <laughs> for eight ninety nine. I didn't you wouldn't get anything off it. Yeah, what teeny little you know, bullshit. <laughs> no, it looks pretty pathetic. We sell ours on the stock, but we don't charge eight ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because most of ours are for the CSA, so we can't be like trimming each one. So we do stocks for them. 
Well, they have to like accept that. Like that's part of the deal with the CSA, yeah. right? So that's, yeah. that's, a good, that's a good deal. Yeah. I didn't mean to oh. change the subject. <laughs> no, I, I'm actually interested. Does any does everybody or anybody top their Brussels sprouts? No. Mm -mm. I think Bill Kenny yeah. did look like I drove down. Did? There. Yeah. We always do um just because of the timing of when we want them. What, yeah. is, what is topping due to them? It's supposed the to make up more uniform yeah. maturity. And like, earlier like, maturity. Oh yeah. But like say it's very variety dependent. Like some yeah. varieties really respond, and other ones don't. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we didn't top them. No, but we never have. I think if we could not, we need like a large quantity already at one time, and so topping, like we can tell like a big difference if we, the ones we top, it is much more uniform for us to be able to do our like you know, 500 for this certain week or whatever. And what variety do you grow? We've been doing Dagon. Yeah, I think that was one of mine this year. Yeah. But also like for us, the the quality deteriorates. So like like the first couple of weeks we were distributing them in, in October, they were like gorgeous, but but like we couldn't hold them in the, you know, like we couldn't leave them in the field very long because Agent. like right now they just look, like crap. So yeah. I hate them. <laughs> I'd be interested to see, hear what other people do with cauliflower. Like we have um just a little bit of cauliflower that comes in, you know, when things get cold. And I finally got some uh clementine that ripened like last week after our stand is closed, after the markets are closed and it's beautiful, but it yeah. took a long time. Um, I had some that came earlier, but I get a lot of trouble with the black spots, you know, on the um, earlier cheddar kind and the earlier purple. Um, what do other people run into on cauliflower? Well, we just had some later ones. We've been picking it for two or three weeks now, but it's the best I've ever grown here. This season was good for it, I think, with the dry weather. I find certain varieties, you you have to cut them, you know, even if they're not full size. Just to the, avoid the black spots? Exactly. You got to yeah. cut them. Uh, it depends. There's certain varieties that are that are naturally open. Those are usually the early ones and the colored ones. And then some of the later ones have like a tight, tight wrap. Yeah. And as soon as you start to see the head, you, you I, I cut every other day, like, because as soon as I start to see any part of that white curd, I'm gonna cut it. Uh, Cause it's protected when it's wrapped from disease. So uh, they're fairly small when you cut Sometimes them. they are, but some, they can be huge. Even still tightly wrapped. We had like I think we had a seven pounder this year. Or something like that. <laughs> we're having the same experience that our earlier ones were sort of mediocre, and now we have beautiful ones and no place. Well, to think how them. hot it was too. You know, they don't like it hot. It was it was hot. I I wound up calling the gleaners and saying I've got you know a hundred heads of cauliflower. Do you want them? And they came and cut them cut them all. <laughs> But they weren't ready three weeks ago. They were just ready last week. <laughs> yeah. Yep. When I what? go into Vero, I'm very jealous because I've been seeing for the last month these beautiful big cauliflowers. <laughs> I was saying to Poe and I, how did you, how do you guys get them so nice? But first year we've been able to do it. <laughs> I think I think variety is important too. I, I mean, I, I swear by Bishop. Bishop What's is the variety. Yeah. Which one? Bishop. 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 That's a white one. Yeah. It's a self wrapping, you... tight wrap. Not too late, not too early. Does anybody do the purple and the cheddar? Or the purple and yeah. the yellow? What varieties have you had luck with there? Purple Moon is early. 
Cheddar is great. I don't like Clementine, uh, but cheddar is good. I like it. The only problem with cheddar. Do you find cheddar? Oh, sorry. Do you no, find no, cheddar too early? Uh, you know, I find it's all over the map. It's like some of the some of the white varieties are so, you know, well bred that the, the, you cut them all in two days. They're like already at the exact same time. And the cheddar, it's like you're wandering through the same patch for two weeks, cutting, you know, the ones that are coming on early and the ones that are coming on later. Uh, so that's a, you know, that can be a disadvantage or an advantage depending on what kind of farm you are. Uh, we, we don't find it too much of a disadvantage, but it would be a problem with the CSA because they're not all ready at the same time. They're not. We gave up on cauliflower because of the the ver the such variable timing that it's like not like you can be like oh somewhere in these two weeks we'll have a nice cauliflower. It was like so wildly different that it was hard to yeah plan for. But yeah, maybe really we could keep going because Steve finally had a good cauliflower <laughs> here. I mean, we have some years to go. Um, well, we this is really the beautiful. first year we gave up on it completely. Yeah. <laughs> we had really beautiful Romanescos this year. Yeah. That's, That's basically all. Yeah. I got a picture. The only problem is, at least in the stand, people don't seem to know what they are, so they don't really move. But Brian used to have a great Mark Twain quote on our Romanesco. Oh, oh really? <laughs> Well, Mark Twain said a cauliflower is just a cabbage with a college education. <laughs> so I said, so Romanesco must have a, a PhD. <laughs> but I have to say, I think that helped. <laughs> there it is. Nice quote. Okay, so we'll we'll consider our other business area cauliflower. Well, <laughs> crops in general. Um, oh, which we I can continue with, but I am wondering. So, do we are for the spring forum? Are we? We're mainly waiting to hear back from Steve's leads for other panelists, since we have a couple farmers willing to do it so far. Or, I guess, which way do we want to go? <laughs> Depend on who's available. I think a lot of it depends on who's available. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be really great to have like a full on speaker and then have like a little panel discussion afterwards. But if we, get, if we don't get a speaker, then never mind. <laughs> right. I agree. Like if we had a really good speaker, that'd be better. And then like small panel, like short panel about like people's different experiences. Um, Should we choose a date now? A tentative date? That, that might work around when a speaker was available. Yeah. Right. I think if we sort of, I mean, we're sort of targeting April ish, that kind of narrows it down a little. Yeah. And a week, a week night. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday, Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Thursday. It's always a good night. Um, so, yeah, for the speaker is and when they're available. And then we could also start looking at the places. I feel like Harvey Wheeler is like a good size for us. Like we can fill up Harvey Wheeler. The wow. auditorium was really big at that school. Right. That's probably like bigger than what this event would be. Um, He's good to work. So I don't know, like maybe I should see just Harvey Wheeler what they're, if they have an April schedule already. Like maybe they have something booked every Wednesday night, but Thursdays are free or something. I'll just I'll just inquire because I don't even know what the process is for them. Yeah, it would be good to be good to do. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Um, I do have. I can ask my grad school professor. I can ask him if he has any recommendations too. I forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> And then if we do a little panel of farmers, like so far we've got gaining ground and salt box, like we definitely want like a tillage like Steve or, you know, something more 
like because both of those are experiences with no till but we want it to be a little more well-rounded yeah, i agree with brian i think that you know it, it would be better if it's not just you know a no-till or right focused on no-till because that's not the experience of most of us right right Really, I was just leading up to see if Steve wanted to be on the panel with them <laughs> as the other. I'd be happy to. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, yeah, and then hopefully the speaker will be a, a balanced thing too. And then we'll have a sound. Yeah, because none of us are. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so I, I can't, I mean, the, the type of agriculture that we do, trying to get all these different crops uh, ready early on this wet ground, yeah. I don't even understand how we would do it, uh, unless we were like, uh, just doing a couple crops. Right. Um, I think, yeah, I think also in the, the tillage discussion is also like what what is the result like a lot of no-till like can't grow a bunch of stuff that mm -hmm. so like you need some people to be tilling to grow all the mm -hmm. winter squash or something um like the bulky stuff whatever it is I think they aren't growing the variety that we are which is like an interesting thing too and also uh, not not planting as early because I mean one of the main advantages of tillage is opening the ground up yeah. early uh, and in a short season like here it's it's like oh we'll wait till uh, late June to plant right no till and well right. then we get a, you know a little crop we're like our customers all go away in July we need right. to get <laughs> so you got to get them in before that yeah. 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 I was interested, uh, Mark from Saltbox here was suggesting that he's cutting back a little on no-till toward minimum till or yeah. light till or something maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that that would be a good perspective because I think there'd be like someone going all in on no-till, some, someone doing like more traditional tillage and then he's like has done both and is like struggling. Yeah in between kind of thing. Cool. All right, so I think we'll be able to move on. What is it, November, December will be plenty of time to keep moving on the spring forum. Like we'll find out about other speakers and. Um, yeah, maybe we can have enough information to nail down a date at that time. Right, yeah. If we find out the space that's available and stuff, yeah. Right. That'd be good. Um, maybe we'll, yeah, we'll aim for some Thursday in April if possible. Okay. Another quick, I'm sorry, one other quick thing. Um, the food project has a cultivator that's like a bunch of shovels that turn rather than blades. They're supposed to be less, you know, beat the ground as much. Are, are any of you aware of that particular like tool? Spader. Spader? machine? It looks sort of like a cultivator, but it's apparently a bunch of shovels that kind of just- Well, like a rotor. Does that may be called yeah. a ripper? I don't know, it comes kind of, I mean, comes from Italy or somewhere in Europe, but I don't know what, I looked into trying to buy one, the things are, atrociously expensive but i think it's a ripper dan really yeah hmm. i don't know i think that, spaders were all very popular for a little while mm -hmm. does it have a pto does it have a rotary yeah on? it goes on a pto and it's sort of uh so it's probably think, a spader. Yeah, the way it was described to me is sort of like rather than ripping through the sail it's sort of like shovels that kind of dig up the dirt and be deposited so it's not doing quite so much damage to the, to the I don't know, I'll have to swing by there and look at it again. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, we can, I feel like the spring forum is on its way so we can talk about other 
other business. It can be spaders. I think that's what they have. I remember the night we were all talking about them, like instead of buying new rototillers. Yeah, and, rototillers tend to polish yeah. a certain depth, whereas the spader just fractures it. Right. But if you have nice big rocks, spaders are very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't we have we don't have a rock anywhere. Oh, there's a rototilla. Don't even talk to me. <laughs> I can just give you a rock. I can give you a rock if you want a rock. <laughs> no, they, we have a rototiller, but they get so polished by the sand, they yeah. get very sharp. Oh yeah. And I was actually one day I was showing the guy that works for me. I said, "Never put your hands down here." <laughs> I pulled my hand out, and I had a, like got twenty stitches on my palm. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! They said I go to extremes to teach lessons. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm telling you? <laughs> I feel like there was an easier way, Dan. You could have just like put your hand behind and then like had a packet of fake blood. And <laughs> or a hand of cauliflower. It would have never been as convincing. <laughs> I got quite a cut on my leg one time from the back of a mold board when it was worn right down to a knife edge. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Oh, I think this this is another business topic. Yeah. You remember the 250th celebration committee? They yeah. were trying to get, guess who got talked into that? Um, oh, you are. <laughs> you are? Yeah. Well, they had like a subcommittee on outreach. This was the committee that was trying to be like, hey, maybe we could expand Ag Day and do all this other stuff. And so uh, somehow I'm on that. Um, oh. They they did. I went to our first meeting yesterday. and. Uh, they did sort of talk about like wanting to piggyback off Ag Day and they were sort of like, well, what would the farmers think? And my general thought was piggyback is fine. Just don't take our event. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, they had talked about potentially wanting to do something in conjunction with Ag Day or as I had said, maybe yeah. like, remember how the Wright Tavern last year, yeah. this year had sort of wanted to do something right afterwards. And I thought yeah. maybe that seemed like nice. So it wasn't like part of our event, but it sort of, took the same yeah. flow of people maybe more interesting there they haven't decided so this is a subcommittee of the larger mm -hmm. 250th anniversary they haven't decided on a theme yet for the 250th anniversary uh so i think a lot of the events will make more sense when they have a central theme that they're all pointing to because right now it seems all over the map um but they do want farm participation in some way uh, but I, I don't think we, we don't need to figure any of that out until they have a theme. <laughs> yeah. It'd be great if we could think of something agricultural to fit into the theme. Yeah. yeah. Once we know the theme, we'll work from that. Yeah, well, <laughs> if we could steer the theme with something agricultural. Uh, <laughs> I'm not any, Were there any ideas of what types of themes or? I guess the theme in 1975 was Liberty. So I don't know. It's, uh, it, they're not the, the theme, there's like an executive committee that's deciding the theme. So they're whatever. Justice. What was it? Justice? Justice. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it'll be something um, that's very big. <laughs> yeah. Equity. Yeah. I think as long as they're not on Main Street. On yeah. That day, they had talked about wanting to do something on Walden Street at the same time as what was happening on Main Street. And I said, the police might not like that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but that, that's up to the police to tell you that one. Um, Maybe we I, better tip the police off. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think they, they basically, they want to do some sort of like farm dinner or some like, you know, community gatherings is what they would like to do. And whether they do that related to Ag Day or just related to like, maybe they would want to hold them at some farms or like salt box or barrel or some things that are used to doing it. They just like seem like they want to have some sort of like community gatherings as part of this event. I did not realize the scale of this event that they're expecting for the 
for 2025 for like the parade, they're expecting like 300,000 people, which oh I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> so It'd I don't... be nice if people were able to hire some help. And yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh, <laughs> I don't, I, I mean, I know I was not alive in 1975 but i have been told by my relatives that it was definitely a big thing in town mm -hmm. uh like huge um so maybe some of you remember that um yeah. i don't know did 300,000 people come i don't know the president <laughs> came yeah came uh, wasn't it um gerald ford ford yeah he came to fenn school and yeah. i mean came on a helicopter dropped off at fenn school so, I mean, they're expecting a similar level of, I mean, maybe not the president, but they're expecting like a lot of. Maybe Trump will come. <laughs> oh, my. We can talk about democracy and liberty. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I do, it, whatever is happening in 2025 is going to be enormous. Um, mm -hmm. There, This subcommittee is more talking about smaller events that would be happening in 2024 and like maybe the beginning of 2025 like they're talking about like there might be quilt guild in town might do special quilts and have an exhibit at the armory or so, you know stuff like that that um, is just related and part of sort of like a larger celebration so. is do we know what month the parade is going to be in it's the patriot's day like april oh, april yeah. okay um so i don't not hear not here day no <laughs> <laughs> They were mainly thinking about this up like 2023 and 2024 doing some something in those. Oh, years. I see. Um, yeah. as, I think in 2023, they were literally talking about like, maybe we should do an event as like a practice event for 2024. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're sort of, they're basically right without a theme. A lot of this is just sort of like yeah. falling, I think a little bit. And then they're hoping to get like the high school students to do a thing and yeah, you know, the garden club to do a thing. And um the Girl Scouts, like stuff like that. They just want to get, uh, I think, community participation in mm -hmm. the celebration beyond like having 300,000 people descend upon the town, <laughs> <laughs> which I still can't imagine. <laughs> they, were, they were talking about that they were potentially going to have people park on like parking lots on 128 and that there would be a buses that a shuttle bus oh i was just like the scale oh. of this is like so beyond what i can even picture and i was not prepared to like take in all this information too i was just like what <laughs> so huh. i think uh, it depends if they can sell it. it sounds like they sold it in the past right yeah huh. i i also was like who who comes to these things <laughs> oh, oh nobody remembers the one from you know except for you know some oldies <laughs> um but the, the folks that are going to come to this one aren't going to be people that are like going every time yeah this is not <laughs> this is not like oh we're going to go support the fen school band let's go ride our bikes down there <laughs> like, <laughs> three hundred thousand people um so it's, it's all emerson thoreau and you know minuteman fans yeah, so they are, they're talking about some other interesting stuff like like they were talking about theirs. They're just throwing out ideas, but sort of there was a stuff people make maybe we want to plant 250 oak trees around town like as part of a larger project or some like art installations and stuff like that, which is kind of interesting. Um, trying to figure out how to incorporate more celebration of the river because that's kind of why this area was picked to be a town, you know, mm -hmm. um, talking about how to you know, include more indigenous history into this as well. So um, mm -hmm. it's interesting. It was a little bit. <laughs> I'm just why am I on this committee? But it's, it's fine. <laughs> well, it, You're goes on back, the it goes back to the Minutemen who were farmers. That's yeah. where it came from. They got the jacket hanging on the plow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I think that's that's part of it is they really want to can make a little bit of connection to. Yeah, that's a chance to bring our agriculture into it. Mm -hmm. Barrett's Mill. That's where. That's the guy, James Barrett. <laughs> well, well, I don't understand. This actually, maybe you guys know more about this, but the um, the the farmhouse is owned by the National Park. Is that right? Oh, yeah. But oh, not the yeah. land around it. Right. Well, I mean, the land like behind it is, but they just don't have much land there. It's like mostly just the house and a bit of yard, like yeah. the 
the town owns like the field next to it that we lease and Mike McGrath lives on. Oh, bless you. Um, Thank you. Um, they have no facilities there or parking. They oh. like just park along his driveway and use like a few of our spots. Like the hopefully no events are happening there because it's like but they redid that house not that long ago, right? They did, but there's still no set. It was just like the the windows and the exterior. There's there's no infrastructure there that um, is like usable, like yeah, parking or water or anything. I will mention that. Yeah, so they they like <clears throat> for Patriots Day, some people come there, but it's very much like people uh, like they kind of park on the lawn. Some of the people working park here. Mm -hmm. fortunately it's like before we're super busy but it's still like i don't know what what do we have like 20 spots at the most if you park behind as well yeah. um and then you have to cross the street and there's no crosswalk or anything and it's like yeah there's just no i guess the park has talked to us about wanting it to be in the future more of a visitor center but there's zero visitor center facilities there well, there's and there's no infrastructure right now for nothing it. yeah yeah and it's not far from the north bridge but it's far enough that it's not nobody's yeah. gonna walk there nobody's walking right right yeah 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 it's kind of a funny setup yeah um, um i'll mention that there's lack of infrastructure yeah yeah it's not a good site for really any event yeah <laughs> got it <laughs> yeah they do their little thing and it's like just small enough that it works every Patriots Day, but there's no yeah, there's no additional. I think I think that where are they gonna I mean even if they're considering sort of like a farm dinner or something anywhere, like parking is a yes huge factor. Uh and, and bathrooms. And bathrooms <laughs> anywhere they do it. Bathrooms, yeah. Yeah. I mean people all come over. I mean, they were like, oh, maybe we could do it on Hutchins. And I'm like, we don't have any parking. And they were like, oh, yeah, you don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ours is tiny. Yeah. Like we're on a hill. There was nothing to level. <laughs> right. 300,000 people. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> we went like one porta potty till June. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so that's my update. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm glad you're on there. So we'll we'll hear of things quickly. <laughs> That's why I did it. <laughs> I also told them I only could really do it in the winter and that I really can't participate during farm season. So I thought that yeah. would deter them from wanting it, but no, they still said that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they're planning that far ahead, things probably don't happen too fast. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of the point of this subcommittee is really um connecting different groups so like the girl scouts want to do a thing well okay well there's a free building of like you know oh the armory has said you could do something there like finding spots for people and just sort of making connections and being like a little bit of a coordination group mm -hmm. um but also just getting more of the local stuff involved in having events yeah. Yeah. which is great yeah Farm dinner at Verrill. I think that's probably the. <laughs> I was like, well, Steve's all set up for it. Why don't we just do it there? <laughs> that's what I say. We get a little more help. Jeez. Yes. Yeah, you definitely need some help. I'm sure you could handle 300 sets. Yeah. I think that's our capacity, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think the town can handle that many. Like, what? I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe it's a stretch. Maybe they're just using the number to scare us. But. Right, right. Maybe. Could be a diverse group, though. Yeah, I thought about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. See what it looks like. Yeah, the Revolutionary War enthusiasts are a different, different breed. Get over here. Oh, I think there's many different types <laughs> in that group. Yeah. My, my I, fear, like I consider myself to be a rebel. Oh, okay. It might be that could be a renovation of the Stone Soup Dinner, but it's yeah. hard for the restaurants get in better shape with personnel. Yeah. yeah. We could also pay, like, you know, do it so that the restaurants get 
one you know they don't necessarily have to donate no they need help though yeah the help right yeah yeah i think um we didn't super talk about stone soup it was sort of mentioned offhand but um they were they mainly wanted to know actually a lot about just like ag day and like the logistics around how we do that which i was sort of like you're talking about something else <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> yeah i think it's you know it's hard to compare Ag Day and essentially because it's like, well, I feel like the, the wonderful part about Ag Day is most of the people who do Ag Day do it every single yeah. year. So it's right. not <laughs> it's not coordinating group the, the you know the nonprofits might be different, but the core participants are the same. So yeah. A yeah. Also, I think people have a different idea of what the scale of it is. I had a friend who used to say when he was like at a market, like I'm just peddling my vegetables. We're just selling like three dollar thing. You know, it's not like this big thing. Like we're we're selling small items. It's not. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. not this like a big event. You know, it really is like a farmer's market. Yeah, I think it has. The past two years, it has. I think post COVID, the town in particular, like the select board and stuff like that, have really like it's gotten a lot of positive feedback which is wonderful yeah. um yeah. The, the, it's really been more embraced uh right which is great um yeah. so that's awesome and there are definitely like the select board keeps looking at it like it's sort of like oh is this a model of other things we could do in town that's like yeah. community yeah. engagement which is great mm -hmm. yeah i think <laughs> like our message should be about like the reason why it works so well is because we keep it simple yes yeah and we had 15 years of trying Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, and, and, you know, there have been ideas of taking it somewhere else and that just like takes away and like opens up possible like issues. Like it runs smoothly because we just, we like stick to what we know. I actually, I brought that up when I was like, it's basically like we were talking about focus and I was like, it, it, we, we've taken, it's gone, it's strayed into like a broader focus and we keep bringing it back to like yeah. just the farms. Like this yeah. is the point. And uh, it, it's a lot easier that way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I think it's but, why there's like yeah, not so many issues. Not what? It's, it's why there's like not so many yeah. issues. Oh, yeah. not so many. Like we used to have issues with the Main Street folks and stuff. It's like if we like keep it simple and do the same thing and do what they asked and moved it off the curb, it's just like it doesn't leave room for like big new problems well and that's i kept bringing that up too is they were talking about oh if we did a dinner if we brought food trucks and i was like the yeah. point though is that those businesses don't right. love this so, <laughs> like <laughs> we're already blocking the road for six hours they're not that happy i'm not sure how happy they would be if you brought in a food truck but i guess right. the, the other thing though is concord is revisiting its food truck laws no. um that was something i did hear about there i mean they, there's no decision making on that but that is being looked at again so well, there's an article to be presented at town meeting that uh, liberalizes it substantially mm. pretty much exempts people from uh, to be able to do it on their own property and any uh, restaurant or farm can have a food truck come in 52 days a year so that could be one day a week or the better part of two months in the summer or whatever, among other things. Cool. Yeah, I think if they wanted to do that kind of thing, like as long as it wasn't on Main Street and they were taking responsibility for it themselves, like if they want to be in the parking lot of the umbrella or so something where it's like near it so they can call it part of it, but we're not actually like having to fit it in or things like that yeah i was sort of like the i brought up the right tavern thing in particular because i was like it was after they were talking about afterwards which was really nice like you know the library concert was a really nice this year because it's there but it's still connected like something right. like that would be appropriate yeah. um and i definitely I, I mainly was also like i don't i mean i know the police are capable of blocking off more roads if they want to i just don't think they want to because it they have, you know, especially the fire department has like such like set routes that like, mm -hmm. with us taking that like, chunk of Main Street, I feel like that chunk of Walden is like important then, so. Right. Similarly, when they do like those, uh, you know, like the cheese wheel and stuff like that, they block off Walden, not Main, like. Mm -hmm. 
anyway. <laughs> Great. All right, so do we have any other business or public comment? No. How about the next meeting, December 8th? Good. Does that seem good? Is that off from our usual? No, that's the usual. This was off. Yeah. But it's a little yeah. it's a little sooner than that. Okay. I mean, right. there's less time in between meetings. Right. So we could do the 15th if we wanted more time. I mean, do we want more time if we're gonna try to talk to people about speakers? Like because Thanksgiving's also like right in between there. Yeah. Yeah, that's next week. It might be hard. Steve, what do you think the timeline would be? I, I think that's time enough. We don't want to get too close to Christmas when there's too much going right. on. Okay. okay. I want to once again uh, thank Joe for taking over the uh, <laughs> clerk. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> One trick, which you may already know, is you can, uh, when you're watching the Zoom, she could actually speed them up. <laughs> like I speed it up to like a time, one and a half times. And then... oh. <laughs> that sounds comical. <laughs> well, when you slow it down, if you miss something, I slow it down, it's like people are really. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> well, what right. if I move to adjourn the meeting? Yes, right. Second. I so move. Great. Hey. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs>